you guys feeling? You guys feeling good? Holiday season is upon us. Oh, I'm done with work yeah. for at least a couple of days. I feel great. I feel like everything just gets a little more wholesome. Like we had a wholesome moment in in the chat the other day um, where I, I asked folks about about Christmas stockings because like I never did that, but we're we're having Christmas at our house this year, and it's like all right, let's do that. Like like what do we put in stockings? And just like hearing everyone <laughs> talk about that, it was like the most wholesome moment we've had in chat in like <laughs> since last Christmas. I forget what it was, but yeah, we're all we're all feeling good. You know, we're all uh we're all turning over a new leaf in this new year. Hmm. At least turning over the old leaf and yeah. kicking it off <laughs> the leaves sidewalk. Leaves are turning over. What more do you want from me? Just shoot 2018. Goodbye. Welcome to Crucible Radio. It's the show for all things uh, Destiny PvP. But you know what? You know what? Other stuff too. We're Whoa. people. <laughs> we're humans. We're, we're we're human people, and we've got you can't prove interesting that. lives. Uh, I believe that I am a human person, and uh, I sure do love playing video games. But uh, there's 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 so much in this in this crazy mixed up world of ours to to enjoy and to talk about and uh, also try not to think about because it's just there and it's happening. And, and that's what, that's what life is like. Uh, but no, we got, we got a fun episode for you this week. Um, last week we talked to cap and from uh, clan adept. And if you did not listen to that episode, go listen to that episode. I uh, yeah. If you want to get better in the crucible, that's that's the one you check out. But you know what? If you want to get better in the Crucible and everything else, uh, you're going to want to stay tuned for this interview. Uh, this one's been a long time coming, I think. I got to play comp with Cap this week. How'd it go? It went very well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, until we ran into uh, one team twice in a row. That was uh, very good. Very, very, very good. His uh, little, little uh, unknown name, uh, N. Kutch. Yeah. Yeah. We were, what he's doing. We were playing on uh, the EU servers, and we ran into him twice in a row with Terminator and uh, a few other really good players. So uh, it went from really easy to really hard very quickly. But thankfully, if you listen to the show, you know Cap is a very level-headed player. <laughs> he is uh, one of the easiest people to play Destiny with I've ever met. So, yeah. It comes up later on in the show, but... Yeah, he's pretty good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what are you eating? Um, uh, It's double Maybe. crisp coal. And it's like a little bag of candy, but it's shaped like coal, and you put it in someone's stocking, oh. and then they take it out, and then like, you oh, like, oh, I got ah, coal. Got, <laughs> well, what's that? You got coal. You got coal in your stocking. Oh. Uh, that's exactly what my girlfriend did last oh. week. <laughs> is is laugh at her own joke about the coal, but they taste good. <laughs> Anyways, keep talking. Like I was saying, <laughs> later in the <laughs> show, podcast goes later keep talking, in the show. <laughs> Continue. We're gonna talk about like balance and figuring it all out. And to give you a good idea, Cap scheduled all of his time for that night and was very strict about when he hopped on and when he hopped off. So uh, balance, people. It'll come up later. You'll know what I'm talking about. Yeah. More to it than just shooting the guns. Um, all right. Well, hey, with no further ado, uh, let's let's get to this interview. It's I long. hope uh, Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty long. Uh, I, I hope let's <laughs> uh, <laughs> give it up. <laughs> Oh, I'm just going to eat this your candy shit on together, my... sir. It was just sitting on my desk. I also have some Mountain Dew Baja Blast chapstick. What? Yeah. What? 
Yeah. <laughs> that, that ended differently than I thought. I know, but it was in my stocking. Mm. <laughs> I was I, like, you're, you're, you're into the stockings already? I thought that was a, a Christmas Day thing. No, no, no. Miss Bones went to uh went to back home to New Jersey already. So we did uh, our little okay. uh Christmas swap. We didn't do anything major. Uh, but she she loves to gift give and make and my stockings really fun. I got a plushy Pokeball too that's sitting on my desk. I don't know what to do with it, but it's cool. Actually, we were we we were out shopping and I saw something that uh I I said to myself, you know who uh would like this is uh Alex and uh I'm just going to get it now and the next time <laughs> I see her I'll give her this. Is she going to listen to this show before I see you guys next? I could tell her to. No, no, t- tell tell her to wait on this one and I'll just tell y'all. Okay. Um mm, so okay. we were at uh Cost Plus World Market which is uh and I must be an adult now because that place is the shit. Oh my God, I want to go buy more homewares from there. Oh yeah, that place is awesome. <laughs> but uh, I saw this thing. Um, I just saw it from a distance. Uh, I saw the words whiner dogs. <laughs> and <laughs> they're like things you put on your wine glass for some reason, but they're wiener dog shape. And I thought to myself, ah, I don't want those. But then I thought, you know who might appreciate those? The only person I know unreasonably obsessed with wiener dogs. So I got him. That's her. That's for sure. Big surprise. Oh, that'll be good. All right. Rib says, don't listen to Crucible Radio next week because he spoils something for you. She's going to be like, sent. What? No, I don't even listen. Big surprise. She's like, oh, sure. I won't listen this week. (laughs) This week I won't listen. (laughs) (sighs) All right. Crucible Radio listeners, uh, we are feeling introspective. We are looking back on the year and where we are at now. And, um, so many of you we talk to on uh, a fairly frequent basis, and uh, if you haven't, you haven't hit us up, do it. You know, go to go to discord.gg slash crucible radio, hop in the chat, and come Join hang us. out. I hope you all are having uh, a wonderful time. If you're not, I hope uh, 2019 is your year. That's where it's going. And uh, yeah, thanks for listening. Enjoy your holiday. If you're listening yeah, to this, no. get some time off work, maybe relax, see your family. My days see off from I'm... work are the same days of the holiday. Yeah. <laughs> Look at you, Mr. <laughs> Fancy. <laughs> so I get nothing extra. <laughs> I, uh, I take the bare minimum off uh, during the holidays because that's the one time of year when no one else is working and everybody leaves me alone so I can actually get some stuff done. And I'm just going to take like a week off in January gonna be great all right let's not drag it out on to the show oh i'm out of chocolate call me a crutch something to lean when you can't feel No, I'm going to miss playing this album. This is Alumni. It is the latest release from Odd Folks. I've played every track on it, and so I can't play it anymore, and it's making me sad. So go check them out. Go to your Spotify, your iTunes, go to Bandcamp, type in Odd Folks, and hit the save button if you want to listen to this some more. If you're a musician and you'd like to be heard on Crucible Radio, we want to hear your music. You know, even if you don't want us to play it, just say so, but send it to us anyway. We want to hear it. CrucibleRadio at gmail.com. And uh, Andrew, let, let let this play out for a little bit. Let the darker things creep in. Welcome back to the show, everyone. We are so happy to bring you a wonderful guest this week. She, you've seen her around on some bungee streams, doing some gambit. 
Welcome to the show, Snaps. How are you? Sup, bro? Hey, hey Snaps. Hi. Hey. Thanks for coming on. I'm just excited. I told you guys before, I'm, I'm hyped to be here, man. This is going to be fun. We had a very hype pre-show Yes. Like a conversation. Oh, yeah. Uh, ran, ran, ran the gamut from grandmas. <laughs> yeah, where is my to, fucking grandma? <laughs> to, to, to burgers. It was, it was lively. Guys, we used all of our best jokes. It was super funny. We didn't record any of it. So anyways. <laughs> very funny. Just it's remember that so key good. phrase, funny. guys. Where is yes. my where fucking is my grandma? my fucking grandma? Yeah. Well, it's a story you'll, you'll find out later. Maybe. Ne- probably never. No. My patience yeah. is running out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well, snaps. Give us give us a little bit of context. Tell us. So so you are a, a streamer among other things. Tell us. Um, tell us what sort of where you are in the gaming world. How did you get into gaming, and uh, how'd you end up doing what you do now? Oh man, it's crazy how how some of this worked out. I know a lot of you guys have weird stories too, where it just it almost like came out of nowhere. Um, I, I have been spending a decent amount of time gaming in general, like in my free time. Cause I had been doing my corporate job. I, I was running two other businesses on the side, plus a nonprofit. A lot of those things, um, I started shutting down and I, I was doing some like part-time work, doing my photography full time at that point, I believe. And I was just playing a lot, a fuck ton of destiny. <laughs> And one of my one of my nephews, he streams on Twitch also. Um, he changed his name to Lord Hefe now, but he was Mr. Beardley at the time. I, I don't know. I don't understand. He's adorable. Um, he told me I should check out Twitch. And like horribly enough, I'm a bad person. So the first time I went on Twitch, I created some random account and I went into his stream and I just like harassed him, basically. <laughs> That's what family's for. That's what it's all about. Yeah, like I trolled the shit out of my nephew and then was like, this is silly. Why does anyone like this? Why would anyone want to watch someone play video games? Classic uh, older person being like, what is, what even, why would you even want to like yeah. watch someone play a video game? Like, can I even get to this on my AOL? I don't understand. (laughs) But yeah, so I I thought it was silly at first. I kind of forgot about it until I started maxing out on Destiny. And there was just like Mm. one random moment in the basement where I'm just like, wait a minute. I should look on Twitch and see if I can find anyone who knows anything about this one thing. And I don't even remember what the thing was, but I stumbled on Gothstream, King of Thalion, for the first time ever. And that was, I think when I got my first clue of what Twitch like really is, because, you know, coming from like a a smaller broadcaster to something where like it's on and popping, you get a better sense of like what it can be, I guess. So I saw the community aspect, but more importantly, I saw a hilarious dude in a Hawaiian shirt, just like saying random stuff and beatboxing. I was like, this dude's just a goofball. Fuck yeah, I can do this. Like, I, I could stream this game and maybe I'll make some money while I'm doing it. I don't know. Like, I definitely got un- into it for, if you if you go by Twitter rules, for the wrong reasons. <laughs> it's like, I play too much fucking Destiny as it is. Maybe I can make some paper while I do it. I don't know. I, I think that's like the best possible reason to get into streaming. But okay. <laughs> Right? <laughs> the, the goal has certainly changed since then, but it was really just like kind of on a whim almost. My nephew came over. He sold me his old cap card and helped me get my first stream up and running. I started streaming um, like three years ago and just like, like most people when they get on Twitch or streaming in general, I was just insta hooked. And I don't know, the rest is, is a very all over the place kind of history, I think. So you, you've evolved a little bit more past just streaming Destiny and you've like attended Destiny events and actually gone and done things with Bungie. How does that feel having just like come from that background of like, oh, I just like, I just liked playing the game and that lead, led me to streaming. And it's like, oh, wow, <laughs> it's so much more than that now. Man, it is a trip. Like, especially because I, I've i always loved gaming. Like, I've always had some form of a console in my house. I've been gaming for my whole life, basically. But I was only able to be, like, a pretty casual gamer because I, I always worked around three jobs, like, my whole life. I had, um, like, when I started getting really into FPS games and stuff, I still had my corporate job. So I would 
get one game a year, maybe. And I could play it sometimes in the evenings, on weekends, like if I had time. So to kind of like take that that immediate shift of like, holy shit, I can play more games. I can play just games. I can like really get into this now. It was really different. It was really different. And now like the streams have have totally evolved. Like initially I was really excited and I was thinking like competitive side is maybe where I wanted to go. And then that kind of transitioned and we've been all over the place now. And now it's like gaming is almost, almost a secondary part of my streams now. One thing I've wondered, I mean, you have a, a voice on your stream and on your your Twitter account and just online that's very frank. You're very honest <laughs> about um, about everything, which one is kind of a trip, right? Like that is a scary thing to put yourself out there. Mm-hmm. As you, kind of going from like that initial stream to where you are, was that something that developed over time? Do you feel like you kind of had to work up to being honest or was it something where you just felt you know, comfortable about being an open book from, from the get go? Oh man, that's, that's an interesting question. Cause I've always prided myself on being a pretty blunt and honest person. And to, it's funny. Cause I kind of skipped over your last question about what it's like working with like Bungie and doing these things. And that's, that's kind of crazy. But I, I remember one of the reasons I started connecting with a lot of the people at Bungie was because I'm so blunt So like (laughs) Deej and I hit it off right off the bat, I think, just because like I, the stuff that comes out of my mouth, I don't really. (laughs) Uh, Spider-Man, Spider-Man, Spider-Man meme. (laughs) Yes. Very similar similar personality. (laughs) Yes. Like I'm, I'm literally sitting here in a bungee or destiny bathrobe from the dudes at bungee. I'm super grateful to have been invited to any of the events there. And like, I always strive to put my, my best foot forward with them. Um, but like, yeah, I, I started out pretty blunt. I think part of it is just the way I was raised. Part of it might be like a Chicago area thing. I, I don't fucking know, but I did hide certain parts of me because I thought that that was considered unfavorable. Like my thoughts were Twitch mm. is all about being entertaining and being entertaining mm. and being real. Don't always mesh well. Yeah. So I can be real to an extent, like if it's, if it's about funny shit, then I can be real. But if it's about like, you know, I'm miserable and and can't look in the mirror for more than five seconds without getting upset, that's like too much. That's not entertaining for anyone. I definitely felt that like, you know, well, like this show, right? You know, we have this, this super narrow definition of like, it's a show about a video game. It's about like a specific part of a specific video game. Like, yeah, we're people. We'll talk about stuff, but like mostly we're going to talk about that. Mm-hmm. And the idea of of um, like, do we curse on this show? Well, it's like, what if little kids? What if little kids listen? I don't want to. I don't want to freak them out. I don't want to corrupt their their minds with how terrible a person I actually am. <laughs> um, and and like just the idea that like I also care a lot about politics, probably to an healthy degree. Do I want to? Do I want to layer that on to, to what we do here? Or for people who follow me on Twitter, do I want them to see just like the constant rage pouring out of me around that? <laughs> and just feeling like I, I, I don't, in person, I don't mind talking about any of it, right? Like I'm an open book, but to do it online and to know that it's going to turn some people off, but there's also an audience for it who wants that kind of honesty is it's scary. It's like a leap of faith that you, you kind of have to take, I guess. I had a conversation. Bones, weren't we talking about this? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I've mentioned it on, not on this show maybe, but like how I literally had a transition point where I did that, where I was Bones from CR on Twitter for so long and I would only ever tweet about Destiny stuff. And then it was just like, well, I live so much of my life on here. I'm going to start being more honest. And a lot of people were just like... <laughs> Shut up! You're a Destiny guy. And I'm like, well, not all of me. Like, yeah, part of me. More than that, I swear. Yeah, I'm a real boy. Like, there's, I have thoughts and feelings here. And then, like, there was a little bit of transitioning where I was like, oh, I don't like that people are mad. That I'm like, ah, and I don't care anymore. And I'm just myself. But yeah, yeah, it's it's a it's an odd shift from sort of like you were saying, being entertaining is like you're not literally a character, but you are portraying something to some Mm -hmm. degree, you know, like you have to be, you have to smile on your face for, for the whole time versus, you know, just literally letting raw emotions pour out of you. And and it's a, it's an odd transition to become a little bit more of yourself once you've hit uh, any sort of following, I guess. Yeah. 
It really is. It's a weird line to walk because part of it is like, I'm, I'm my own personal brand. Right. And, and for like all of us, it's the same thing. Like we all have ourselves associated with it. It's not like you guys only started or only were Crucible Radio and that's it. You just had the Crucible Radio account and no personal personalities or anything like that. Like having this weird feeling of like, am I doing myself or or my following or my community like a disservice by holding back? Or am I going to fuck myself over by opening up completely? Knowing that right. some of these topics especially can be very polarizing. <sighs> It'd be, it would be probably bad if I just started tweeting whatever I was thinking from the Crucible Radio account. So, <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> In that sense, probably not a good idea. Yeah, but because we are all our, our own individual people, it definitely, you, you got to make that call for yourself. Like, am I ready to, to say this? in at least a kind and open enough manner that people can tell I'm saying my views without judging theirs? Or do I want to just like keep my mouth shut entirely? Well, I mean, to alleviate any worries, not that you're currently worried about that, but I think that's now part of your thing, Snaps. I mean, like your community and your following is built around people who are all about like, yeah, let's address our own faults. Let's our, address our own awesome things about ourselves. And you've really turned your your stream and your your brand into that conversation. And I think that's, it's, it's awesome. It's an awesome part of my feed and I think it really works for you. So I think in that sense, that sort of, you know, shifting from, well, I'm playing video games to like, let's be me, let's be real. Let's talk about stuff has been uh, an awesome, an awesome conversation to start having on the internet. Fuck yeah. Feels are, good. Are you, are you finding that being this open and trying to express yourself a little bit more and even like talking about stuff like uh, mindfulness and all you're finding that it's helping you do the video game side a little bit easier. Like you're not having to like focus so much on being like a performance of the video game. You can just casually enjoy it and oh, yeah. be able to express yourself this other way. Yeah. Cause I just don't care <laughs> about like anything. <laughs> like, Oh, I remember the, the moment where it was like, yeah, I'm way behind on the grind. I haven't even touched that yet. It's fine. People like me for other reasons. <laughs> First do a raid with us. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. It's fine. Yeah, exactly. I just, I really, um, man, it's so tough to give a shit about anything these days. It really is. And like, not in a negative sense, but like, I, I'm my own person. Like, I feel good every day, basically. And that that in and of itself is like a shock almost still. And it's been like, basically a year of me actually being a happy person. But um, yeah, I, I used to get really caught up in my identity as far as what other people perceived me as. Like I didn't have a me that I created. I was the me that whatever I, I thought other people saw me as. So because initially I was really like competitive focused and I'd started to make some ground there, I put so much pressure on myself and I choked on so many like major opportunities to do better because I was like, I've got to be better. I've got to, I've got to do better than this. And being a woman in the space, like you just get shit on in the competitive scene, like so hard, mm. man. It didn't matter. Like I could be just doo-dooing on kids the whole day. And there will always be someone who comes in when I like look at chat for a second and like shoot a wall and be like, oh, figures, fucking woman on <sighs> Twitch. Just, just show more epidermis. That's why you're popular. Jeez. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's deep breath yeah. on that one. <laughs> yeah. I've, oh, yeah. Um, well, so, so let me ask if people go into your stream, what's some of the stuff that they might find there that you're talking about that they, you know, you don't find on your average destiny stream? Um, anything and everything. I think, I think, and that's one of the things that um, my my community has expressed that they enjoy and that other people who are new to the community have expressed that they enjoy. We're very vulgar. We're very ridiculous. But we know where the line is, you know, so we can talk about anything. We've talk, we talk about politics. We talk about religion, everything. But we can be doing that one minute and then have like an extensive conversation about like pooping schedules in the next minute. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, like life is sloppy. Life is a fucking mess. So we just kind of go with where life takes us. And as long as you can express yourself in a non-aggressive or judgmental or passive aggressive kind of way, like you're welcome. I don't like the the whole like personal attacks if you're not winning an argument. Like I, we're, we genuinely just want to have open conversations. And if it's clear that your mind is closed off, you're, you're not going to have a great time in the chat because we're, we're going to be bored of you very quickly. And we'll just be like, okay, well, we wish you well. Hope you have a great day. But we're going to keep having actual conversations here, not just like talking to a fucking brick wall. Yeah. Do you find that, I mean, so, you know, you, you've got, you've got your crew on Twitch. I mean, you've got, you've got people who are an ongoing part of the conversation. Do you find that like when people are arriving at your stream for the first time and like, they're not just total ghouls, Mm -hmm. But do you find, like, is there sort of a learning curve where they're sort of figuring out, like, what is going on here, where they they start to get it? Is there anything you do to, I don't know, help welcome people into the chat in a way that kind of helps them understand what's going on? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm genuinely very interested in other people. I'm, I'm a curious human and I've gotten to a point now where I've, I I think I recognize that I've got something to learn from every person I meet. Mm-hmm. So whenever I see a new name in chat, I, I want to ask them some random ass questions like what color shoes are you wearing today? Are you sitting with your legs crossed in a seat right now? Like, do you chew your nails? I don't know. Some some random stuff. And then the typical yeah. where are you from? What are you into? What are you passionate about? What does your ideal life look like? And the rest of the community does the same thing. Like that's that's one of the things we get the most compliments on is I don't think there's really that learning curve, except for with the commands, because we have a lot of random ones. But people can come in and just say hi and feel like they've been friends with us for 20 years. That's cool. And it's it's when you're extremely online, it can be difficult to remember that every single person that you interact with is like actually a human. Right. Like they're actually a person. <laughs> they've got their own like internal world. They've got their 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 life experience. Like I, I feel the same thing in traffic too. Like mm-hmm. every single one of these cars in every direction has a person who's like in the middle of their life story right now. Most of them had pooped that morning. Yeah. It's <laughs> so like so when you can do something to kind of like crack that veneer of like, oh uh, you know, 18 character or less handle just showed up in chat and said hi to like, no, this is like an actual human who's typing mm-hmm. into a computer. Just kind of like remind people that everyone exists. That's a, uh, yeah, that's, that's something. It's fun. Yeah. It makes, it makes our conversations a little more interesting. And really I believe communities are formed on commonalities and I'm not going to find my connection to another person by keeping shit surface level You know, Uh so if they just come in and I'm like, what's up? How's your day going? And that's where it ends. What have I learned there? You know, like, how have I connected to this person? How have I established any kind of commonality or common ground that's going to allow them to say like, okay, dope. I'm not alone. We share this in common, whatever that this might be. Yeah. Like the moment when I realized that like small talk exists to try and like get something interesting out that you can actually talk about. Yeah. And I, I like I had an, an whenever I take like a lift to the airport or whatever, it's always like, all right, we're gonna talk about like the weather and driving for lift <laughs> for 30 seconds until wait, you edited Transformers 4. Okay, we got an hour <laughs> and you're gonna tell me everything you know about video editing, please. Like just just to know that you're you're like one little tidbit away from going, this person is fascinating. I wanna know everything about you. Fuck yeah. And like the small talk I feel like doesn't get you there as fast as jumping right to the good stuff. So like, I like to meet strangers. I wouldn't recommend that in a lift, but in your Twitch stream, okay. (laughs) Depends, depends, man. One of my favorite things to do, and it's funny because I did this at that, um, at the Gambit event that I went to in LA for um, Bungie Um, in the, in the Uber with the team that was organizing the video and, or the stream and everything. And, and the people who were going to be on the stream with us, except for Josh Hart, he met us there and it's a little quiet in the car. I was going to ask if he was in the Uber. No, it was just, it was a little <laughs> quiet. Like it was the team plus me and Dado and um, Destiny 2 Vids. What's his name? Oh, I can't think of his actual name right off the bat. Um, but it was, it was just kind of like we didn't, Dado and I knew each other pretty well, but everyone else was kind of still new. And it got quiet for a second. I was like, all right, so 
you guys believe in aliens or what? <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the car perfect. ride was way more interesting. So perfect. Like, why not? Just I jump can't. to the good shit. Do you believe in aliens? What would you do if you were going to die tomorrow? What's your ideal uh, life look like? A uh, small tangent story, but I used to go up to Wisconsin to friends' cabins, and this was back in uh, a time when cell phones were flip phones and there wasn't great coverage. So you would maybe drive an hour without any cell phone service. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was driving home really late at night with my friend, Adam, like back to Illinois. And uh, we stopped at a Taco Bell and like in this one little block, we got cell phone service. And like in that time stopping to get food, uh, Adam got a text from our friend Spencer uh, who said that they discovered aliens. (laughs) And then we had kept driving and Adam's like, oh, I lost service. And so we had like an hour to go where we just sat there fully believing in aliens <laughs> and that aliens had been discovered and like how the how life was about to change. And then we like hit civilization again. And Spencer was like, oh, sorry, it was like an Onion article. I just read it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> But for one hour of my life, I fully believed we had discovered aliens and it was a beautiful time. I was just going to say, that must have been a magical fucking hour, right? Like, <laughs> we, damn, we, the we world just, is going to yeah. be so different. Just in, us in a car like, wow, wow, <laughs> wow. It was like all we did for like 10 minutes. <laughs> you think they're nice? But oh, I want to hang out. <laughs> one thing um, I appreciate about your, your, your stream and your Twitter is that you... Um, I don't want to say this. I mean, I, I think I, I feel like for some people, life kind of makes sense, and the way they naturally just kind of live is healthy and it works for them. And I am envious because that's not how it is for me. Um, I appreciate that you're really honest about like the work that you do to take care of yourself to, to make your life what you want it to be. Like it's not just autopilot. It doesn't come automatically. You actually have to show up and do it. I'm interested in, in that conversation and kind of wonder like how, how it was sort of getting into talking about that stuff on the internet. Oh man, it was really tough. Um, I started out in a, in a very different place when I started on Twitch. Um, I was in a really bad relationship at the time and I was really in a bad headspace, which I pretty much at this point now I can recognize I had been in a bad headspace since I was like 10 years old. Like Mm. I've been battling severe depression and a panic disorder and insomnia and ADHD and a bajillion other, you know, issues that I kind of just like pushed down. And Twitch was the first time that I, I was, it, it was clear to me that I was being seen, that like people were seeing through that shit. And it was really, mm. that was really fucking weird. When you, when you go through so many like surface level relationships and you're in a really bad relationship and you feel like no one sees you as you are. And suddenly someone on Twitch who you barely know, you know, some random ass username sends you a message and is like, hey, are you okay? You seem a little down today. I'm like, What? How the fuck did you know that? (laughs) Are you kidding me? Like, I've been smiling my ass off all day. I'm thinking, like, I got this down. I am a pro at pretending to be happy. And suddenly people are are telling me that they could see I wasn't. And it finally... The the dogs that know that you might be a little sick. Yeah. "Mm." Yeah. They're checking in. Oh, it's like a Twitch sense, dogs. right? Like they, <laughs> they actually can tell what's going on, not just like what you're showing them. So it was, it was kind of a shock to me when I recognized how many people in my life didn't see me, even on the days when I was trying to be seen as like, I'm having a hard day, help me. They were just kind of like passing by like, okay, see you later, you know? Um, so I, I wound up leaving that really, really bad, emotionally abusive, manipulative relationship and like venturing off on my own. And it was the result of people in stream finally, like, well, not finally, like telling me, like, we see you, you're a person. You actually seem like a nice human. It feels like you don't see yourself as a nice human. Um, so I opened up one day after kind of like coming to terms with that, like, okay, they see me as I am. Some people didn't, they were sending me messages. Like, how do you stay so happy all the time? I'm struggling. I'm miserable. And like, that's hard to see. So I, I finally opened up a couple years ago and, and told everyone about my suicide attempt when I was younger 
and just expressed, you know, like you're not alone at that point. That's really the only message I could say is like, you're not alone, hang in there, death, self-harm. Those are not the answer. There's a lot of potential in your life. But at that point, even I had, I had no fucking clue just how much potential there actually was. It was still kind of an abstract concept to me. It was more just like, I really wanted people to see that they weren't alone. And I really wanted them to, at the very least, get those two concepts out of their head that like hurting themselves through any manner of speaking, um, you know, your diet, your, your relationships, the, the way you treat your body, like self-harm, actually like cutting that kind of stuff. And then obviously death, like those are not the answer. Those will not get you where you're looking for. The future is, is very up in the air. Like you cannot predict it. Just, just like ride it out. We, it, it can get better. Um, and then, you know, it took, I think this year for me to start actually changing it up and really putting the work in <clears throat> to make a visible change or to make a, a noticeable change in my life. And, and that shit's wild. Like I, I've had some, some nice conversations with you dudes offline about that kind of stuff too. So is there anything that you've discovered that you kind of, like, I'm thinking of like on a daily basis, what are you? Uh, introducing into your daily schedule that makes you feel so much better and ready to jump in and conquer those, you know, those fears and that like sadness, depression, all that. As many things as I can. Um, this is, th- this is one of the things that I've, I've kind of learned. Um, and I, I told people this when I did my talk at guardian con too, like, you know, I, I love all of them, but I didn't, I didn't, start on this path of like self-discovery and and exploration of the mind and mental health and stuff like that for them. That was a really happy bonus for me when I found out (laughs) that the stuff I was doing to make myself not feel like shit could actually help other people to feel better. It like really spurred me on. It kept me going. Um, But what I've learned in, in all of my research and my, my years of nonsense and my one year of actually feeling good is um, your your mental health, if you look at it in like a really basic analogy, it's, it's a table that you want to keep in balance, right? The majority of us have only a couple legs on our table, and it might be like video games, exercise, and food, or relationships maybe. But what happens if one of those gets taken out? And like, I know a lot of guys or, mm-hmm. or people in general who are like, oh, I feel great because I hit the gym every day. Like my body is super fit. That's what keeps me sane. What happens if you sprain your leg and you can't go to the gym? What happens if that one leg of your table gets taken out? Are you going to still be in balance? So my goal is to add as many legs to my table as I can. It'll be a ridiculous looking table. But <laughs> if, if 50 of the legs get taken out, I'm still in balance. And I've found that there are so many different things you can do that are great for your mind, body, soul, like, Creative hobbies are great. Anything with music, art, like those are wonderful for your mind and your body. Meditation, I know we talk about that a lot. Exercise, your diet really is a big part of it. People don't realize that like it's like 95% of the serotonin that makes its way to your mind starts in your gut. It's the hardest part. Oh, it's so tough. Um, and like, why does pizza have to be so good? <laughs> oh, right. I mean, everything in moderation, right? The key is balance, balance out your diet, balance out your mind, balance out your activities and your hobbies and your energy to keep yourself feeling good. And even on those days where like, you know, shit is really rough, the more legs you have on your table, you're, you're still going to have a hard day, but you can bounce back from it faster because you're so well balanced. So I look for opportunities whenever possible. Yeah. Like reading is something I think a lot of people miss out on. We could be learning so much in our minds. We we love to challenge ourselves. If you don't feel like you're challenging yourself, you feel stagnant, you feel stuck. And then you're just like, fuck, what is this all for? But when we're doing things that we can feel proud of ourselves for, when we're expanding our minds, growing our bodies, whatever, like that's the shit that keeps us alive. I uh, recently on this show, talked about my struggle with balance, especially when it came to <laughs> like actually playing destiny mm. and playing it too much, uh, within like a week span, I kind of got really carried away with, uh, chasing one particular thing. And it really took some, you know, self self analyzing to be like, no, whoa, 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 <laughs> that was bad. 
That yeah. in all sense of that word, it was bad. Um, in no way did I improve in Destiny. In no way did I, you know, f- improve other things, whether it's like relationships or my health or all that. It was a bad time, and I I think it that's the perfect way of saying it is balance, balance, balance yeah. in everything. The thing that I relate to people a lot when they ask me, because because we do a lot of avi- advice streams. Um, And, you know, just for the record, for anyone who's listening to this podcast and doesn't know who I am, like, I'm not trying to say I have all the answers. I don't know shit about shit. I've lived (laughs) a life that has been full of a a big old mess. Plenty of people have had it worse. Plenty of people have had it better. That's not really the important thing here. What I share is just my perspective. And that seems to be valuable to people. So I'm going to continue to share it. But um, what I, I get a lot is how do I become a better blank better in my relationship, better at my job, better at a game, whatever. And the same thing I tell everyone every single time is you are not going to be a 10 out of 10, any of those things, unless you're a 10 out of 10, you like shit is going to trigger you. You're going to be upset. You're going to be stressed. You're going to be anxious. But if you are in balance and then you approach whatever you're trying to do, you are going to kick ass at it. I think that's something, you know, like when we've talked about this sort of stuff on the show before, we get, um, I mean, and it, you know, it's, it's fine, but like we, we, we get a lot of responses where it's like, you know, this is supposed to be a crucible show, right? Like talk about the crucible. And I think there's, there's this thing that I've kind of realized as I've gotten older is like all this stuff applies to everyone. Mm-hmm. Like you might not be thinking about it. It might not be it's just like the point in your life where like you're, you're, you know, maybe you're just busy. Maybe you've got so much other stuff going on or you're focused or everything feels okay. So like, I don't really want to think about it. And that's fine, right? Like, you know, you find the right time for it. But it's real. Like, if you want to be good in the crucible, listen to last week's interview with Cap and learn all all the strategy, all the tactics, all the decision-making, all all the skills, learn all that stuff. But that's, that's like half of it. There's this whole other thing. That's like, who is showing up to sit down and play some video games that is going to decide so much more about, about, you know, what, what you're able to achieve in this game that it's just easy to overlook. It's easy to kind of get your blinders on and, and forget about that other stuff. Yeah. Like when you're when you're being driven by insecurity or being driven by this this need to feel accepted or fit in or need to prove yourself, your gameplay, your your everything is gonna be way different. And I can say that like from from how I play even now. Like I did the the one v one tourney at um at guardian con and I like still once in a while we'll do like one V ones against people. If I'm in balance that day, like I'm unstoppable, man. I'm not the best (laughs) player by, by any means, but like, I am going to fuck you up if I'm in a good place that day. But if I sit down in that seat and I'm thinking like, I've got to prove that I'm good at this, everything changes. Suddenly the, the loss isn't just a failure of a game. It's, it's, I am a failure, you know, and Failure is an action, not an identity. But when you're not in balance, it's really easy to take on the identity of all of your failures, all of your insecurities, all of your flaws. Yeah, there's, I mean, people play video games and play Destiny for different reasons, right? For some people, it's fun. It's, you know, it's it's an escape or, mm-hmm. you know, they get a little bit of time and they want to, you know, relax and play video games. Other people play it because they love the the competition and the, you know, it's a sport. It's, it's something you you want to win at. Yeah. Um, for some people, it's their job. Mm-hmm. And like all these different reasons are viable and, and sometimes different ones fit at different times. But still, there's this, this underlying idea that like, it's, it's a game, right? It's supposed to be yeah. fun. Like you're supposed to enjoy it. And it doesn't matter what your goals are. If you're not enjoying it, I mean, I, I have just found myself like, especially if there's a grind I feel obligated to do where it's just like, what am I doing here? This is not fun. I could be like eating spaghetti right now or something. Yeah. Why, am I, why am I just running this lost sector over and over or whatever? Yeah. Um, that, yeah, just to even have the self-awareness for me to like ask myself that question can be work, right? Doesn't feel natural. Yeah. That, that very first part of the question I think is the biggest key for me is the word why. 
Like I ask myself why all the time. And then I ask myself why another five times to each of the answers that I come up with so that I can figure Uh out what I'm actually doing shit for and then determine, does this serve me? Like, is this, is this worth my time? Is this going to help me? Is it something that I'm doing because it brings me joy? Is it something that I'm doing because I feel like I need to for some other reason that really isn't, isn't true, isn't real? Yep. I liked what you said about um, like sitting down to do one V ones. And I guess kind of thinking about it, like I know from the moment I sit down, if I'm going to play well or not, Oh like, yeah. before I pick up a controller before anything else, like I just know, am I in a good spot? Do I feel loose? Do I feel like focused? Am I, am I in the zone or am I just doing this to like not deal with whatever yeah. that shit is over there? <laughs> and this is what I got. So I'm going with it. Oh man, I was in a state of like pre-tilt for the first probably year and a half of my streaming career. Oh, I can only imagine, yeah. Yeah, like I mean, my name is She Snaps on Twitch for a reason. It was partially the rage and partially the photography, but when I would like snap at people or like lash out while gaming, I'd be like, that's my fucking name. You knew what you signed up for. Get used to it. So one thing, I a question I was, I wanted to ask, I mean, there's like, there's no normal when it comes to playing video games. There's every type of person playing video games in every kind of way. Um, I mean, it's, you know, we, we have a lot of parents who listen to this show where it's like, yeah, I can get 30 minutes twice a week mm-hmm. and I love it. And this is, this is my challenge. Like I enjoy it as much as anybody, but this is how I do it. And then on the flip side, you know, especially in streamer culture, there's people who will, you know, stream for 10 hours straight for 20 hours straight or do a 24 hour stream. I guess I'm kind of wondering, like, when you have that pressure or, you know, just that desire to like have a gaming day, just start to finish, but you're also trying to be conscientious about, you know, not fucking yourself up. Like, how do you... How do you like? Is there is there a right amount of video games to play? Is there a too much point that that you figured out? Um, I just listen to myself and my body. Really, like, do I feel like I'm pushing something, or do I feel like I'm being pulled? Like, am I am I kind of coasting hmm. and enjoying this ride, or am I really like pushing to make something happen? And if so, why? Um, in the beginning, my nickname on on Twitch was the Iron Strima. <laughs> because I used to stream like accidental 16 hour streams every day. I was streaming se- like seven days a week. Um, a lot of the raids and hosts I got earlier on in my career were from people who were like, yo, I, I see you when I get on in the morning. And then I see you when I get off <laughs> in the evening and you're still fucking there. Like that's not sustainable. And in 24 hour streams, like I don't advocate for that anymore. Um, but like, there are some days like today I spent, um, not playing destiny, but like I spent an eight hours of my stream actually playing a game. And it's been a while since I've done that, but I was pulled. I was feeling good the whole time. None of it was like, (laughs) I need to do this for any reason. I was just like, this is, this is an example of something that's bringing me joy. I'm having a good time doing this. I'm going to keep doing it. As long as I still have time to do all the other things I need to do in my day, even in a small portion, like 15 minutes of reading, 10 minutes of meditating, 15 minutes of exercising, that kind of stuff, like that's that still works for me. I just, um, you know, variety works very well if you can balance it all out over time, even over the course of a week, get a lot of shit accomplished, you know? Yeah, I mean, well, so, you know, the three of us, uh, sometimes on this show, sometimes just between ourselves, think about this sort of thing. And Snaps, you think about this stuff a lot. But if it would, if it was just totally new, you know, if you'd never thought, oh, there are things I can do to make myself feel, be- feel better or take care of myself, what would you tell someone are the first like three best steps to take? Oh shit! Pro tips. Pro tips. That's that's a really tough one, man. Because like like I was saying, I. I recognized some very basic stuff like death and self-harm are not the answer. You don't know where your future is leading. So just kind of like be open to it. But I still hadn't accepted the idea or or even considered the idea that your mental health is similar to physical health in the sense that you got to work on that shit. Like you wouldn't get all Mm. jacked up and then be like, cool, I've got a six pack. I'm done working out forever. 
And that's, that's how people <laughs> treat their mental health. Like I'm having good days. I've had an easy life maybe, or I'm just, I go with the flow really well. So I don't need to work on it. I'm okay. And then like something comes along and, and shakes that. For me, it was uh, my boyfriend and I moved in together at the beginning of this year. And oddly enough, we met through Destiny. Um, But I thought I was a pretty chill person until we started living together. And then suddenly I was like, shit, I'm the angry asshole in the house. (laughs) I didn't realize. Like I had been around so many other very angry people that I hadn't quite recognized how unhealthy my own anger was. Or how out of balance I was until I saw how well balanced he was. And he got me, um, the very first step that he got me on was meditation. So I think if I were going to give anyone a tip of like how to start on that path of feeling better, it's, it's all about introspection. It's, it's about finally taking a look at yourself and thinking like from a non-judgmental standpoint, like, What else could I be doing for myself? What could I be doing better? Not there's something wrong with me that needs to be fixed, but Mm. I love myself as I am, but I can do better. Where can I do better? Where should I start? That's good. Yeah, nothing like a long-term relationship and having like four (laughs) days in a row where I realized like, wow, I didn't get enough sleep. I'm feeling bored. And now I'm picking a fight for some reason. Mm -hmm. And I can like see that I'm, why, why? Why am I like this? Oh. <laughs> I'm the bad guy. That doesn't, that does, that's not what I have thought so far. Yeah. And having yeah. that like realization where you're like, shit, I'm not who I thought I was. What? Like shit, that, yeah. that shakes you. And it's especially hard when it's, when you're in a relationship and you're like, damn, I'm not the person I thought I was. And I'm impacting another person that I really care about mm-hmm. with this like unbalanced version of myself. <laughs> yeah, man. We're getting deep yeah, today. It is. <laughs> well, I, I, I know one thing that I feel like I, how I'm 33 now. And I feel like one thing really just in the past, like, I don't know. I, I started to figure out, figure it out in like the last five years or so. But just this idea that as a, as a young guy, my, my tendency was like, okay, well, I need to do this. You know, if I'm going to be successful, I got to do this. And, you know, I want to, I want to uh, have a relationship. So I'm going to accomplish this, which means I got to do this and get ready here and then go to this. And then you got to be ready to do this. But then also it's like making all of these plans that ended in some goal. It's mm-hmm. like, all right, and then I'm going to be good. And then having this weird feeling where I'm at now where it's like, I look back on the last five years as like, yeah, I did some cool shit. Half of it or more was stuff I did not plan for at all. Like it just yeah. happened and I showed mm-hmm. up for it. And then also thinking like, wow, I still, there's still so much more stuff I want to do. And so just like not even getting okay with it, but just recognizing that I'm just like permanently a work in progress. I'm never where I want to be. I'm always maybe a little bit farther along than I thought when I give myself credit And like being okay with that, knowing that it's like, I'm not halfway on this trip. I'm just like, I'm at this particular point right now. And it was different before. It's probably gonna be different in the future. And that's just how it is. And I have limited control to like plan out the perfect future. That was tough. Uh, And it, it was years, I think, before I even like, once I figured it out to be like, I could be okay with that. No, I'm going to make a plan. I'm going to make a plan to fix everything. <laughs> that's that's really tough. Do you do you find yourself setting specific goals in terms of like what you would consider like your your path to success often? Yeah, or it's it's just, you know, like I got like a a keyboard, like a like a piano keyboard um a couple years ago and it was the kind of thing where it was like yeah i want to be able to i want to be able to play jazz music and i want to i want to be in a band but it's like i've played other instruments right like i i kind of you know i'm not starting from nothing Mm -hmm. um and it's like you know if if we have a holiday party i want to be able to play like jazzy christmas carols and sing and like all these specific things that would mean like okay i'm done (laughs) and i've done some of those things, maybe not as much as I want, but realizing like, no, what it's really about is like, I can sit down at the piano and play a little bit and it feels good. 
Yeah. And like, that's it. Like, it's not about getting closer to that goal, although, you know, like I'll practice and work on stuff, but it's more about like, what am I going to do today? Like, am I going to sit down at the piano and come away from it going like, okay, that was fun. Like, yeah, I feel good. Like that, that is so much more important than the long-term stuff. I think I've come to value that more. Um, I like it. Well, still, I think it's important. This, you know, I did see that one episode of 30 Rock where Alec Baldwin was playing jazzy Christmas carols at the holiday party <laughs> and singing and not been able to get that goal out of my head ever since, but I'm okay if I don't get there. Yeah, I mean, because you're, you're enjoying the ride wherever it takes you, right? Like, it's fun to have little ideas of like, oh, it would be cool if this thing I do brings me to this, but as long as at the root I'm doing this thing I like to do, who, who fucking cares, right? Yeah, right. That's a good feeling. It's a good mentality to be in. Meditation 101, like if I'm starting from absolute scratch and it's like, all right, you got, you got 15 minutes to prove this thing to me. I'll try it. I'll try it. What, what, what do you do? Like what, what works for you? How do you get started? That's really tough. Cause part of me, like if someone were to say something like that to me, I'd be like, why do I have to prove it to you? <laughs> what Fix do you me. have to lose? <laughs> you know, like, what, what kind of proof are you looking for? Like you want to meditate, come out of it and be like, I am an enlightened being. Like I know yes, all, ideally. I see all, I've tapped into the universe. Um, what, what I like to do is tell people in general, like meditation is, is powerful. I was blown away by it. And from all the research I've done, like you can do the same thing. You can see that there are a ton of different types of meditation. There's a ton of different values and benefits that people get from it, but you've got to be in that mindset where you're actually open to trying it or else meditation is probably going to frustrate you because you're going to think that there's a goal for it. Like I have to feel a certain way at the end of it. I have to do a certain thing during my meditation or else I've failed and I'm not good at meditating. And it's really not like that. It's um, it's a great practice for starting to control your mind and your focus and your breathing. But there's really no like wrong or right way to do it necessarily. It's, it's just hone the practice. That's where I like have my troubles with meditation is when I get into the mindset of being like, okay, if I'm thinking during it, like say Mm -hmm. I like get caught up in like thinking about like something for my day and it's like understanding that's okay. Yeah. (laughs) It's okay to think about a thing in it. Uh, Yeah. As long as you are recognizing that you did it, like you did think about it. Yeah. Like, okay, now you can step away from that thought. Yeah, because the idea the is, is still the same. Like you are the one who is in control of it to to that extent that you were like, okay, I allowed my mind to wander. Maybe it wasn't a fully conscious thought. Maybe it was kind of a subconscious thing, but I allowed my mind to wander. And there was some kind of resolution there, most likely. Like your mind probably fixated on whatever it was because it was something that an open loop that it wanted to close or whatever, um, you know an ideal meditation, if you want to put like some kind of label on it is one where you are able to catch yourself doing that and return to your breathing. And for people who do it all the time, they don't even really wander off on those little thought paths. They just sit down, start breathing and let things pass by until it disappears. But really like it it doesn't, matter as much how good you are. And I'm putting that in like air quotes, very obnoxious air quotes. It doesn't matter how good you are at meditation. It matters that you're meditating. Like it's, it's, it's like how they say people who floss live longer lives than people who don't. It's the conscious act of taking care of yourself that implies that you're doing other conscious acts to take care of yourself. Right. Mm. Meditation is just a really great step on taking care of mental hygiene versus physical. I like that. And I think, you know, when you have, you have like heroes, right? Like, you know, I have Alec Baldwin, like playing the piano and singing. <laughs> it's like, or, or, or Get that, you know. Get out of your head, Brent. Weird <laughs> right? hero. Or just like the, that, you know, like that perfect Zen master who just like doesn't do the wrong thing when they're meditating or, you know, whoever your favorite, you know, gamer is like, they just are so in the zone they're doing it. Like it's easy to confuse. Here's what they're doing when they're doing it well versus here's what it looks like when you're learning how to get to that point. 
Yeah. And that can be real different because like learning how to play piano is not playing beautiful jazz music. It's, I'd say about 50-50 playing really, really simple things slowly over and over. And then like 50% just like trying to do something and fucking it up. And yeah. just like trying again and trying again. And I think like in, in gaming, like it's, you know, like when I'm starting a new game and it's like, wow, I'm terrible at this. This looks fun, but it is not fun to be bad at it. Why? Like to, to have that frustration, um, it can be tough to make the shift to be like, no, this is just like, this is what it's like to get better at something. Like you eventually get to that end point, but um, oh, you kind of got to give yourself a pass, you know? I think it can be really tough to get to that point sometimes, but I also think we can surprise ourselves by how much of an impact can be made in a single moment. And a lot of times mindset decisions are those momentary decisions. It might not be that mm. thing that you worked on forever. It's just that that time when the message finally clicks with you and you're like, yeah, of course I'm going to suck at things at first. I'm going to enjoy every minute of me being terrible as I learn how to not be so terrible. And I'm, I'm personally like really enthralled by that process. I love getting into things and being terrible at them at the start. I find it strangely enjoyable. Like when I did jujitsu and I was like, I'm new here. Everyone else is a higher belt than me. And I would look around the room for open roll and be like, black belt, brown belt. Yeah, I want to roll against you guys because I'm going to get my ass handed to me, but I'm going to learn so much. I'm, I'm all about that learning. So like, you know, don't sell yourself short. Your mind is super powerful. You never know when you just saying, fuck this, I'm going to enjoy the ride is going to actually click for you. And then suddenly you can start enjoying the ride. Birds is really just waiting for you to tell him that his mind is super powerful. Birds, you're <laughs> such a brilliant person. It like blows me you're away. You're no Alec Baldwin though. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, but I'll be the judge of that. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> Listen, man, I, I know people who know people who know people who know Alec Baldwin, and he wishes he was you. <laughs> <sighs> well, I, I'm willing to believe that. Yeah, sure. I'll go with that. Uh, that, that, that works. That works. I'll take Let's it. Let's roll with it. I'll take it. Um, well, okay, I'm just going to say in advance, this is going to be a rough segue here. Um, Ready for it. <laughs> but uh, speaking of segue things alert. that you're good at. Uh, so we do a podcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So as you know, the name of the show is, no, you are no slouch when it comes to destiny. Uh, and I think we could probably keep talking about this stuff for another hour, but um, there's definitely some stuff uh, I want to touch on here. Let's talk about destiny. Let's let's talk about how you play this game. And I, I, I think the question <laughs> I want to start off with is like, when you go into the crucible, what what does your mindset feel like when you're on? How do you where, are you, where are you at in your head when you're in the zone and you're, you know, you're going to start putting up some numbers? That's um, usually if I'm in that mindset, it's almost like um, like a finesse thing. Like I'm really excited to go in and try and be really wiggly. It's like agility training. And mm. I'm just like, I just want to I just want to get moving around as fast as I can and kill as many people as I can while I do it. So I get into like a. It's, it's when I'm in that positive mindset where I sit down and I'm like, yeah, I know I'm good at this game. Like not from a point of ego, but from like past experience, if I'm like in a good, in good balance and I try hard and I'm, you know, well hydrated and sometimes caffeinated, like I have really good games. A lot of times I don't. So I don't know, sitting down when I'm in that good mindset and I'm thinking like, I have an urge to like be at the top of some of these games here. I think that's really what it's about for me is like, I want to move quickly, get as many kills as I can and do my best to be a team player while also not because I'm not, I'm a terrible teammate. <laughs> <laughs> like I know, I know Watts has talked about um, one of the things that she enjoyed about like destiny being the hero moments. And that was always me. Like if I saw my team on the other side of the map, I wasn't like, let me go rush to join them. I'm like, let me go to the other side because I'm going to find all the people that they're not going to find. And then I'll be 1v6 if that's how it works. And it'll be fun. I'll see what I can pull off. I mean, sometimes that like high energy, even that risk taking thing 
is the best way to know that you're kind of like in a flow or get into that flow. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like it's, it's those games and it's quick play or it's comp and you do something a little crazy or a little risky and like eight out of 10 times it wouldn't work, but it really does. You get a big play. Yep. And then your rest of the game, you're just like flying. Like you yeah. feel better. Your super's all charged and everything. And you just like go. And I think that's kind of the fun of, of destiny, especially right now, especially in the meta and all that. It's just do something real stupid and big and crazy and see yes. what happens. And it can really change your entire flow for the game and really change the, 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 the way this game is going to turn out for everyone else. It's a, a ripple effect. Man, you know, Whoa. this just makes me, I, I really miss trials. I really miss clutch or kick moments. Like that was yeah. one Bro of snaps. my favorite things. Yeah. Dr. Bro snaps. And like, like way back before any of that, even when like Lupo and I and a bunch of other people would do like trials carries, like that was always a blast, man. Just pick up some random person from the community and be like, fuck it. Let's see if we can get you to the lighthouse. And you have people coming in with like exclusively raid weapons and gear. And they're like, I don't play any PVP. I have no idea what I'm doing. And we're like, okay, just don't worry. Hang back. We got this. That shit was (laughs) thrilling. That was the stuff I liked is being able to like feel like an important part of the team without having to feel like I had to be the best teammate, you know? That I think is like one of the hardest things to explain to people who don't play video games is like that feeling that's like, no, I'm not just like clicking on heads here. Like yeah. there's there's a story to what's happening. Yeah. Like we we spent however many hours trying to help this one person get this milestone that's important to them. And like, you know, we're on the the last card of it and shit is heavy and we're in the last game with the last card and it's tied like this could go either way. Those moments were fucking thrilling, dude. Like that (laughs) shit was what like really got me heated up. That was the time when like I would actually close my Twitch chat, close the, the shit on my other monitors and just game. Now I'm still kind of in the like half gaming, half streaming all the time phase. So you mentioned how Trials was a big part of it and like the feel of Trials. Um, and we all, we all very much miss, miss that feeling for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that you were at the summit along with me. And do you feel like we have a good base now after like all that feedback that came from that to bring back something like trials? Do you think like the trust is there? Do you think like they've built up the, a really good base game to put trials back into? You know, I don't know. I don't know the, um, the game, the way that you guys do, but at that summit, the thing that really stood out to me was getting the one-on-ones with like the developers and having like those, those little um, almost like panels, but in a really small group, small environment. And you, you remember that the developers are also gamers playing the game too. Mm -hmm. Like I got some really interesting perspective out of that. I wish I could remember some of the specific instances, but I remember coming away from some of those days, like, okay, this thing that they did that everyone's saying like they fucked up so bad, how could they even think this was a good solution? I can see how they got there now. Like they're also Mm -hmm. playing this every day. They want, a lot of them at least, want the same shit we do. And this was their their way of attempting to solve this problem. But you don't know how it's going to work until it's actually played out in the field. And in several instances, unfortunately, a lot of the stuff they dreamed up didn't translate that well. But I do feel like they they do have a good understanding, especially after the stuff I was hearing at that summit, of what the representatives of all these various communities were looking for. And I know I was impressed by the broadcasters that went there that had notes from all of their community. Like, here's what we all as my community have discussed. So it's not like it was just a bunch of broadcasters in a room like, I want this, I want this. It was... It was it was like we were there, you know, as representatives of a district or something like, you know, it was it it was really interesting. But I do feel like they have a good base for it. I just I don't know when it's going to come and what else is going to have to change for it to get there. But I I do have a good amount of faith that we will get there again. Oh, yeah. 
maybe it's blind faith. Cause like I said, I don't know shit about <laughs> shit, but it was, I, I did have a good feeling about it and talking to the PVP guys, especially you don't have a little bit of blind faith in this game. Then what are you doing? Well, like, yeah, it's I, been I've, too long. <laughs> I've never played a game like destiny one. Like it, it really, I've yeah. never had a game pull me into it the way that that game did. I've never had a community grow the way that the destiny cr- community grew it's it's a fucking special thing they have there. They might have a handful of additional games in the future that flop that don't do as well, but they're they're trying to live up to some some big shit there, I think. And at the core, what they have is special and unique, and I think it'll it'll all balance out eventually. Yeah. Well, it's not quite the end of the year yet, but man, it's been a crazy one. Um mm-hmm. What well, what would you say like either, you know, in game or out? Like, what were some of the biggest highlights in the Destiny world for the in the last year for you? If if you had a few twenty eighteen highlights, hmm. I really enjoyed um, the summit. That was that was just really cool. It was a cool experience because it was it was my second time at Bungie, but it was my first time getting to meet everybody. Um, in terms of like the team that works on stuff. And that was just like we were talking about earlier to come from someone who, who never could have imagined being a part of this scene to getting like personal invites from the team. Like, Hey, we want you here to help us with this. Like what a, what a fucking trip. And then getting invited out to the gambit thing. Like that was a super blast. Um, getting to play gambit on the main stage and getting to do the one V one tournament at guardian con, like I've I've had a a great deal of positive destiny highlights this year I think. Yeah. Man, Destiny's fucking awesome. <laughs> I'm just yeah, like It's not too bad. It's leaning too back bad. in my chair right now like fuck yeah. Yeah. Well, um maybe we should end on this good note. Snaps, thank you so much for coming on the show and just hanging out doing what you do which is just talk about everything and anything. It's been a really great conversation. Hell yeah. My community is going to be really proud we didn't talk about poop at all. Like, really. <laughs> <laughs> we we poop. talked we about poop talking once. about poop. It was, it was a meta sort of conversation. Yeah, I think we're in yeah. the clear. They'll still be proud. No, but seriously, guys, like, thank you very much. I really, I really enjoy all of your personalities, like, individually and, and together. I'm, I'm a big fan of you dudes, even if I don't have a lot of time to actually get into the weeds with you on the game stuff. Y'all are dope dudes, and I'm happy to be a part of this. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, thank if you. people want to be, you know, new friends with you, where can they find you on the where internet? Where can they talk about poop with you? Yeah. 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 Where there's they some go? people who are like, yeah, now's my chance. Yeah, right? Let's talk about surprise poops, man. I'm really interested. Um, <laughs> you can find me on Twitch at uh, twitch.tv slash she snaps. And then everything else is all under mind of snaps. So if you want to find my podcast, my Twitter, my Instagram, that's all mind of snaps. But, you know, like you saw in this podcast, the mind of snaps is a messy place. <laughs> uh, I had a fun time on your podcast and I got to talk a little about my life outside of video games. So everyone should go check that out. It's a really I great really time. enjoyed that. Uh, honestly, like that was such a it fascinating episode. I had a great time on that. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Oh, wait, have you started meditating since then? Because we talked about that and you said that yeah, sweating oh. was all over you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I, I have that same hang up about it. Like, you know, I'm supposed to achieve Zen, but you know, you, you, you and Swain both talk about it so much. I know, I know it's something I need to, to give a try because like I said, like we just sat here for an hour and I'm thinking, Oh, yep, that's good. Oh, yep. That could work for me. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a shot soon, but. Soon. I'm getting there. <laughs> Soon. <laughs> what you what we really need to do is get his girlfriend on top of him about it and he'll he'll end up doing it. Yeah, probably. There we go. <laughs> uh, well make sure you head on over to her Twitch stream and ask her about grandma. <laughs> 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 that shit, that's so my fucking grandma. <laughs> it's so random. Like it, someone's gonna come into my stream and be like, "So I'm, s- I- I'm supposed to ask you about grandma?" And I'll be like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" Yeah. Oh, those what guys. What did you just say about me? those guys? 
And to to all our listeners out out there, I just want to say, we did it. You didn't think we could do it. Another huge episode. Last week, you were better at strategy. This week, you're better at being a good person. You feel better, and you're going to get better at destiny as a result. Crucible Radio, we're in your brain. We're always on it. I wish I could drop this mic from the mic on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you it, could. It's bad for kind them. Of, Don't right? do that. Yeah. CR out. Yeah. Snaps yeah. out. Goodbye. Good night. <laughs> Peace. This is really happening. I miss playing this album. One more time, it's oddfolks.bandcamp.com, facebook.com slash oddfolks, or give them a follow at twitter.com slash oddfolkstx. Uh, it's, it's, it's rare you find a band that writes music where each part of the song knows where to go next. Hmm. And I can't forget the day George called and told me what happened. My voice grew weak, my knees hit the floor. When I felt your presence leave I could tell you but you wouldn't believe me I saw her face in the back on the ceiling I was bleeding out her name After I swore that no one hurt me when I prayed We weren't so bad to Andrew, put put reverb on the the bit I do at the end of the interview where I do like a hype man thing. That'll be funny. Oh yeah. Also, uh, I muted my mic several times during the interview, interview, but I've been feeling uh, particularly gassy today. So if you the mic picks up any farts, <laughs> go ahead and cut those farts out, please. Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> oh, I, we have I our outro. Fart, but <laughs> <laughs> my stomach made a loud enough noise that I'm pretty sure my mic picked it up. You can leave that in. I don't care. Doing snap sprout on that one, I think. Yeah. Yeah. We're humans, man. We're human people. People are right. We're human people. That's the theme of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Episode over. Bye. Bye. 
What's up, everyone? Bones here. Do you like podcasts? Do you like chill conversation? Well, me and my co-host Swain and Birds put out a bonus podcast every month on Patreon. If you want to check it out and be a part of more awesome stuff, head over to patreon.com slash crucible radio and join the squad. See you there.